how do you start these intros? No, seriously, I've put off releasing this video for so long because I just don't know. So I'm just going to start like this. I apologize in advance if Google gave me mistranslation and bad pronunciation. My name is Ropes. Guten Tag. Assalamu alaikum. Konnichiwa. Bonjour. Hola. Zdrastvetia. Hello, and welcome to the channel. The first video of hopefully my new life's journey. And I know what you're thinking. Oh no, it's just another Let's Play channel. Now, not every episode is going to be a Let's Play like this, but I actually figured this would be a great place to start off for learning YouTube. So if you do end up getting through this video, please do me a favor. Leave me a comment. Let me know how I did. And please be brutally, brutally honest. I prefer it that way. All right, but disclaimer aside, let's get into what we're doing for the day. So Above and Beyond is a mod pack about using automation to create a rocket ship to get to the moon. And in order to do that, we basically have to advance through technology, starting off using kinetic energy and eventually making our way into more advanced science. We basically need to work our way through the Stone Age, processing down a few items like andesite, kelp, wood, and clay. These items will then be processed into kinetic mechanisms, which we will use to start making our basic machines. And along with that, Create Above and Beyond has a very interesting way of making iron. And the best part is, you don't have to worry about dealing with any sort of villagers. And these are just the first steps that we're going to need in order to get us to the moon, along with some crazy farms I have planned to build along the way. So with that being said, I think it's about time that I stop talking and get on with the journey. First I came across one of these campsites, which unfortunately doesn't really have any loot, but they do have these silky smooth satchels, which kind of work like shulker boxes, which is nice early game. Next, I came across one of these dirt igloos, which I don't really understand, but I'm not going to complain because this one had a villager underneath it, so... Not too far off to the west, I found one of these old abandoned houses, which is kind of nice. They have these blaze burners, which will come in handy a little bit later game. I then stumbled across one of these mine shafts, which is kind of nice. I had my first set of diamonds, another golden apple. And, you know, because I'm new to this whole thing, I figured I don't need to record myself going down there. What's the point of that? I was surely mistaken. Three minutes in, and we slipped on some loose cobblestone. That's okay, we'll pick ourselves back up and get back on the adventure. More like derp venture. My luck was turning around. I first found a village, which I decided to call I Hope That Was Just a Fartopia. Gathered some flowers, which is going to come in extremely handy for some enchanting later. Grabbed some sweet berries. Made sure I didn't lose the flag seeds that I picked up, because I was definitely going to need those later. Mostly because I didn't feel like making a spider farm yet. Ah, well, would you look at that? Some free iron. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine. When you're not really fine, you just can't get into it because they would never understand. Hey, I said free iron. <laughs> Thank you. I continued to pillage the village for rice, because that was going to be essential for progress in the future. And now that I had basically gotten all of the resources that I needed to get everything started, it was time to find a base of operations. And fortunately, when I opened my mini-map, I found the land of Kool-Aid Lakes. Now this place is just Gorgeous. I mean, the water tastes a little radioactive, but you can still swim in it. I mean, look at these trees. Look at all the colors. This is definitely going to be the place to live. And now I know what you're thinking. There's no way I'm going to die a second time in this mine shaft. And you're right. We're going to set a bed, though, just in case. You know what the thing about beds is, though? It helps when you sleep in them before you go down the mine shaft. Day 5, Death 3. I ended up getting back to the magical lands and found this broken down windmill with some parts and this bird that, uh, well, let's just say it sounded hostile and I kind of laid an egg of my own. And then for some reason spent five minutes stressing about which spot would be most feng shui to place my bed. After wandering around the lands a little bit looking for some uh, friendly mobs that I could turn into some food farms, grab some rabbit feet, I started to notice that there was no hostile mobs that were spawning in the area. This was absolutely amazing, uh, at least for the first night, and then the second night rolled. 
I found out there's witches and I guess zombie villagers that can spawn, but I'll take that, man. There's still no creepers. So I started to round up some of those friendly mobs, had some issues with my recording software, so uh, cue elevator music. I dug a staircase down into an area that would pretty much become my strip mine later, and it was kind of nice. I found this weird little laboratory thing in the one corner, and then just off into the other side, there was a skeleton spawner. But this wasn't just any skeleton spawner. I mean, this thing was like the Broadway musical of skeleton spawners. I mean, these things were all wearing gold armor and running around with canes. If they would have had their top hats, they would have gotten lead roles. And to top it all off, there was some exposed diamonds down there too, so that was a bonus. At this point, I was positive I had more than enough iron and gold to start making all the factories that I needed. So, we are going to look past the flat earth science of an alloy being made out of stone and kelp. Uh, because, yeah, we need these things for our cogs and our gears and our shafts. <laughs> And because Create has a much more efficient method of burning things other than a furnace, I decided to only make one, which I regretted later, but that's a different story. But for those of you that are unfamiliar with Create, they have these fans, and you can place lava, fire, water in front of them. It makes it really nice for cooking, washing, getting extra materials in this game, basically. And first of the Create machines, the press, which my one brain cell figured out. I placed in the wrong spot. And look, easy fix. There we go. Now, if I can only remember this one crafting recipe that I looked up two seconds ago. Absolutely, you guys saw nothing. And after struggling with doing some simple one-to-one -one math ratio, I figured out exactly how much I was going to need to make the fans to start smelting and washing all of my materials for later. And after performing the rigorous task of manually pressing these sheets, which I may or may not have struggled a little bit with as well, let's just say I'm very excited to get this process a little bit more automated in the near future. Alas, I had enough iron sheets to make my very first propeller, so mix that with a little bit of andesite alloy. In Create Above and Beyond, they have this very interesting mechanic where you mix things in a smithing table, and it creates uh, the machines that you'd need for building your factories. But in order to power a lot of these machines, you need kinetic energy. So, in order to see these fans spinning, I need to make some water wheels or some windmills, and in my own personal opinion, I like the water wheels. But before I get them set up, I gotta deal with some. Even though mobs can't spawn, phantoms still can, so I gotta keep up with my sleep. Completely gearless, I figured it was a better idea to fight like a Teletubby and run away until the sun came back out. Which also made me realize I was running low on food, so in the morning I should probably take care of that. So I decided to harvest some crops for my well cared for animals. With a spacious pen enough to fit a family of 25, I smother them with food and my love until they reciprocate that love by falling over, granting me gifts of experience and meat. But it's time to get back to our first machine setup, so we'll place our water wheels down, which helps if you place them the right way, and also at the right level. So after I dug out a little bit more, placed them at their appropriate height, and dug myself out of there so that I could release the water and get the things moving. Geared them up so that I could get all my machines spinning at proper speeds. And with that, I had enough power to basically set up my first create station. It was uh, a simple contraption that we could use for smelting and washing everything, but also grinding the materials that we would need, and a little mixer for mixing our andesite alloys and other things. So this was a great little first invention that was going to help us progress a lot further in this game. And it also has a foolproof method for uh, pressing things down, and I don't pick them up prematurely. Though I very quickly realized this machine is a hazard. 
which we'll probably have to fix later, but we need to make progress for now. So I made a backpack and then decided it was time I needed to chop down some trees, but in the fast way. So in the create mod, you can use these fancy saws and basically take the two by two trees, take out three of the logs underneath them, spin the crank and chop down the entire tree. It's a bit of a time saver and in this case also rains chickens. But why stop at 2 by 2 trees when there's these massive oak trees that are just randomly spawning in this forest? As you can see, uh, yeah, I think they dropped about 5 or 6 stacks of wood, so I'm going to look for a few more of those. And as some of you may have already noticed, I did decide to upgrade my tools using the Tinkers mod. I just used simple stone ingredients, which I covered in diamond. By doing so, this basically allows me to repair them using stone. Is this broken? Yes. Should I exploit it? Absolutely. Now it was time to start getting my andesite farm set up. So I proceeded to dig a hole, and thanks to these new tools, it made it much, much faster to get this done. I also ended up getting a little bit lucky, finding some diamonds as I was mining down. And that's when it hit me. I'm playing create right now. Why am I digging manually? Even though I only had one layer left to go down to bedrock, I was committed. So I dug out an area to place my water wheels, placed said water wheels, and then had to run back upstairs to go get some water to power them. So got them powered up, placed some cogs to increase my RPM, ran back upstairs because I forgot more materials, which seems to be a pretty common theme started to make my spinning mechanism that I was going to use to dig out the area and definitely made sure to configure them so that they didn't pick up extra blocks when they spun. Placed some glue that I could use to add my drilling mechanisms onto them and then proceeded to add my drills which thanks to this wrench makes it much easier to spin them into the proper place that you need them to be. And now all that was left was digging out a path so that I could reach the on switch to turn this thing off and on. And five days later of building the machine and we finally dug down to our final layer. Oh yeah, this thing's working. And in fact, it's working a little too fast and not registering all the blocks that it's supposed to be hitting. So we're gonna have to slow this down a little bit because normally walking into this thing, it should hurt me, but it's not even registering a player's hitbox at this point. So we'll take out a gear or two, slow this down a little bit, and nope, still looks like that's going a little too fast. We will do the player test. Yep, no, I guess not. Nope, nope, it hurts. So now that we have our area dug out, it's time to start building our andesite farm. So what I was originally planning on doing was making this gigantic arm and a massive lake of lava. And what I ended up figuring out about this is that it created way too much stone. So I used it for a little bit and then figured it was uh, time to start making a different invention that was going to be a lot more efficient for andesite. So I found a nice little patch where there was basically two strips of three bedrock in a row and just used this one little arm. Even though it was a smaller area, it actually ended up mining the materials a lot faster than the bigger arm in the long run. And it did actually look funny because it looked like there seemed to be some connection issues, but it still filled the chest. Eventually expanded it out on all four sides as well, which quadrupled the output. Now that that was done, I decided to use some of the diamonds and gold that I had found to finish upgrading my backpack to the final stage. And then, after struggling with a little bit of speed and power issues, I ended up creating what would become probably the most important part of my base. A spinning table. Now, the thing people don't realize about Create Above and Beyond is you don't have to finish the game. This is how you beat the game. This table, right here. No, I'm just kidding, but, but this is the pinnacle of our farm building, right here. That gets no better than this. Also, it kind of makes us dizzy and helps us forget we have these. This video is not sponsored by, but would like to thank Kool-Aid for putting out the fire. Next, I decided to look into the trading modules, because though mining for obsidian is fun, I much more like the idea of trading for it. And after organizing some chests, I noticed that I had these shaft decorations I decided to play around with. I struggled to get them off, but I would recommend using them to spice up your build. 
But with playtime coming to an end, I decided to start digging out an area to get my andesite up to the surface, where we ended up digging into a very mob-filled cave. No, seriously, I think there was death 7, 8, 9, and 10 in here. After clearing out the mobs, I finished up most of the tunnel, but then I realized I need soul sand, so I gathered some obsidian to make another portal. So, completely undergeared and unprepared, I decided to go into the nether. Upon entry, I was greeted by a block I had never seen before. Flesh, of the unspecified variety. No sense in dawdling though, I quickly saw that there was some soul sand off in the corner, so I ran over and grabbed that, and also grabbed a little bit of quartz because we were going to need some of that in the near future. And then I figured, well, I don't need to get blown up by a gas, so I'm out of here. So, once back in the overworld, it was time to place down my kelp to make all water source blocks up to the top. And once I did that, replaced the dirt with some soul sand. And then gave it a little test just to make sure that we floated all the way up to the top. And... Great success! Now that we had that set up, it was time to dig a hole down so that we could connect our belts at the top and the bottom using a shaft. <laughs> So we'll just add a couple gearboxes and a few more shafts, get our storage all connected, turn the thing on, and we'll go see what we got popping out the top. And nothing. Well, I guess it helps if we actually connect the belts at the bottom, so we'll uh, go get that done. But once again, because I'm new to this, I was having some issues with my recording software, so I uh, didn't get the recording of me fixing that or me setting up the skeleton of our kinetic mechanism machine which basically consisted of all the refining processes that I needed to do from all the materials that I was about to start harvesting. Which means that now we just have to basically set up our tree farm, our kelp farm, and some rice. And I figured rice was going to be the best thing to start, because we need that to get clay, and clay takes a little while to build up, so we want a bit of a stockpile before we get everything else going. Now, you're probably going to see me using this design a lot playing Create, just because I find it so effective. It works great for building all sorts of farms, but it actually works really well for building circular towers. Basically, it's this magma block with a fan on top of it. After that, we use the same harvesting design to make a hydroponic tree farm with kelp underneath it. Then proceeded to make my table saw set up to process my logs down into slabs. And then from there, I only had a few more steps left to complete the automation of kinetic mechanisms. Just a simple assembly line to process my rice, which I thought I was going to have to use the auto hand with a knife, though I was quite relieved to find out I could use the same process using the millstone, as that would save me a lot of iron in the future. And with that done, all that was left was basically to fuel a couple of my fans with lava and water, place a couple of buffer chests, plant a couple saplings, And then before you know it, we've got kinetic mechanisms. Or at least we will once I fix a couple of filters and other kinks that are just in the system here. Derp. 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 Yeah, I kind of forgot that I needed an empty hand to pick items up off the platforms. But look! Kinetic mechanisms! They are finally working! Then just to lock up a couple of buffer chests in the system to make sure no items get mixed up. And because we barely have about 20 days left, we have got to hurry. I still want to get an iron farm set up before we complete our first 100 days. But we're not going to use villagers, we're going to use the create above and beyond system where basically we're going to create stone, crush that down into gravel, and then wash it into iron. So I laid down some belts built some platforms for my fans, which helps if I remember how to build my own farm and place them in the right spot. There we go. That looks a little bit more like my planning. Then we're just going to place down a little antifreeze. And then proceed to build the area where we are going to be generating and grinding down our cobblestone. And luckily these chutes are cheap because hoppers would be expensive right now. Next, we're going to place down our drills, which once again, thanks to our handy dandy wrench, makes that really easy. Put down the cogs in the back that's going to power the machine. 
And then, of course, because I was in a hurry and forgot to sleep, I got chased down by a couple of phantoms. Which I luckily no longer have to run in terror from. But I should still probably sleep, because I'd rather not deal with them. And now that all we had to do was basically place our lava and set up a couple of chests for collection... Oh, wait, I forgot. There's the important task of making sure that the thing's got enough power to actually work. And after a little bit of pondering, I decided that I would set up sort of a double watermill setup, mostly because it would look cool, but also to save on a little bit of space. After a little bit of playing around, I decided to go with six rows of four watermills to start. Got all the water wheels connected together so that they would combine all their power. Did a little configuring on my gear ratios. And then made a completely overcomplicated design to get my fans connected. Which, after I struggled for a little bit to get all of my pieces spun the right way and figure out which ones weren't connected. Can you figure out which gearbox it is? If you picked this one, well, unfortunately you win nothing, because I can't afford to hand out any prizes. But maybe one day, if we get big. Anyways, fan spin the wrong way, simple correction. Just find out which gearbox to change. And after we got that fixed up, all we have to do is get our millstones and our drills connected. Or at least that's what it looks like on paper. Well, looks like we didn't get enough power. And we're definitely running low on time, so we gotta get this thing fixed up quickly. Which actually turned out to be a lot more of a struggle than I thought it was gonna be. Like running into inventory management problems because I haven't built a storage system yet. My water wheel's constantly breaking because I can't control my flow. The never-ending barrage of potions that I kept having to dodge at night as well as two villager raiding parties that seem to show up during the day, taking a trip on my favorite belt line a couple times, more fluid issues leading to more breakage, finding out that I had to gather more resources because I still didn't have enough water wheels to power it, and then making sure that I would have enough water wheels to finish this and the next project. Who am I joking? This will probably cover this one. Prematurely releasing the floodgates on my water wheels. I swear to god, this never happens. Maybe windmills would have been the better choice. Nah. So, after demonetizing a few more witches, and drowning myself in grape drink for a little bit to fix the water wheels, there was only a few more water wheels that we had to battle with in order to get this thing up and running. No, seriously, I take back everything I said about water wheels before, windmills are the best. But with the last one placed, it was finally time to release the dam. And all that struggle was finally worth it. We had power. This thing was up and running and it was working, well, not quite perfectly. We're going to have to fix our timing so the water doesn't push the cobble away from falling into the chutes, but we can do that next episode. At least I think that's the problem. And that would pretty much bring us to the end of the episode. With the exception of processing our granite into gold, we were at least able to get our kinetic mechanisms, and we got an iron farm up and running so we can use that for better tools and armor and trading in the near future. And also after further investigation I realized that one of my water wheels wasn't connected so now we have a ton of power to start our gold farm with. I'll take it. But that'll be for next episode so thank you everybody who stuck around till the very end and hopefully we will see you in the next one. And please leave a comment.